I got a great question today about putting a warning message onto a product template dialog and conditionally um, having it display when uh, something is not perfect. <laughs> so uh, here's a little example of that. Okay, we've got a cylinder here in this case, and what we're going to do is have this cylinder. Um, very simple dialog, right? We have a diameter and a height. When the diameter is not a multiple of 10, <laughs> that's my rule, then we're going to have the, the message pop up, right? So if this is 100 right now, it's good. If it's 120, it's good. If it's 150, it's good, right? Um, I'm not immediately updating. We, we could. Um, those are all happy, right? But if I put in a number that's not a multiple of 10, then we'll get this message that pops up that tells us that the diameter should be a multiple of 10, right? And if I change it back to one that is a multiple of 10, then of course it, it uh, goes away, right? So something in between is there and you know any number that's a multiple of 10 will, will uh, not show the message, okay? So let's take a look at how we put that together. Um, in the expressions, in here, we of course have the diameter and height expressions in here. Um, what I did was put in a parameter check. This is the one that I'm gonna actually use. This is a Boolean expression in this case. It doesn't need to be. It can be a one zero, it can be really anything, but but this particular one I chose to do a Boolean expression, right? So this is gonna to do our test down here. And and for the test, I'm doing a mod function that's, that's just a, a division and looking for a remainder essentially, right? Um, so taking the diameter and dividing it by 10 and, and I'm not using units on the 10. And basically this gives us the remainder here, right? So if we have 180 now, if we make this 182 in here, then then our, our mod of that, of that is two, right? And if we make this uh, 187, then then of course our mod is seven, right? So, so this is saying basically if that, that, that test is not, if, if this equals zero, then it's good, it's true, right? Uh, and otherwise it's false. So false is the bad state. Uh, if this is false, then we want the message to show up. Okay, so that's how that's architected right there. So the thing with the message here, I'll do this in a minute, um, but, but this parameter check is the first step. So that parameter check in place, let's come in here, and, uh, and it's, in that, it's in that failed state right now, right? These are visible. Um, as we come into product template author here, we can see uh, a couple of things. And uh, I've, I've actually put in a little image here just for fun. And, and then there's this message down below, okay? And there's the, the title, of course, is that, that string. Um, the key is this down here, right? In the dependencies down here, you'll see a visibility. And that visibility usually looks like this. <laughs> you come in and that visibility says false. It's, it's, just, it's just there, right? The, the object is always there. If we wanna enable a parametric visibility here, we can change this to true and choose a few ways to do that, okay? Uh, we can do that with a suppressed feature. It can look at a feature, and if a feature is suppressed or not suppressed, then it will display or not display a control. So for instance, if there are parameters that drive a particular hole or derive, drive a particular extrusion, and, and that hole or extrusion is suppressed, it may make sense to suppress the widget, the input widget maybe, right, that, that drives the numbers for that particular feature that's not currently in the model, right? So, so that's the logic with this one. Um, again, with a numeric expression or a string expression or a Boolean, Boolean expression, we can choose here, for instance, with a Boolean, to have this be have this be true, right? And display it if if the result is either true or false. Um, in our case, we want to display it when it's false, right? That's our error condition. Um, if this were a numeric expression, we've got lots of options in here, right, for <laughs> how, how we would do that. We could say that if we want it to be greater than some value, we can do that, right? And then the object here, we'll double click and we'll, we'll choose an expression, right, to be the one for the numerical expression, for instance, if we, if we want to do it that way, okay? Uh, but in our case, we've, we've built that Boolean expression. We'll use that Boolean expression. Again, double click in here, choose that parameter check. And when that's false, we want the message to, to display. So we'll choose false in here, okay? So, so that's our setup. And I've done that same thing with the, the image up above here, right? In the image up above here, um, Similarly, we've got that uh, visibility turned on. We're using the Boolean expression parameter check, the same one and the same false. So these have the same conditions. These two on here, the image and the text have the same uh, condition associated with them, okay? So as we do that, in fact, I could take that and uh, make that a, where's my immediate update right there? 
make that an NX update just for fun. Um, and that'll update immediately when the diameter changes. We can just see it happening. Um, but again, when we're, we're in that case where we're not a multiple of 10, then this will show up, right? Um, so if we finish here, come out and do this again, we'll see that happen again, right? So if we're 110 here, that's a multiple of 10, and so it, uh, it stays. 120 is good, right? 190 is great. Uh, if we do 191, then we get the message, right? So we're not fixing the value right now. We're not trying to adjust it. We could do that with a visual rule if we wanted to. Um, another thing that I, I thought about with this is displaying the current value uh, in here just for fun. If we wanted to, we've, we've got that up here, of course. But if we wanted to include that in the message, we could do that. Um, we could do that again with a visual rule. Uh, and just for fun, I did that one. So, <laughs> so let's go take a look at it. Um, actually in the expressions, uh, what I did was this, uh, in here, I went in and said that the, again, the diameter just made a string expression here that says the diameter value should be a multiple of 10. And this is a new line here, carriage return on the second line. It says that the current value is, and then we're appending here a little format function that takes the diameter value, the current diameter value, which is 171 in this case and formats that. I'm doing it really simply here, just it's a straight, in a, basically integer kind of look, right? Zero, zero decimal places afterwards. Um, and so the, the net result of this, if we look at the value of this, um, is is here, right? That the cell tells us the current value is 171, which is, which is obviously correct here, right? And uh, if we make this 165 or something like that, then uh, this of course will update and show us 165. So our message is telling us the right stuff here at this point. Um, with that message then, what we can do is inside PTS, we can come in here and uh, we have a visual rule that I created that is called update the diameter message. And, and this one basically just fetches that message expression. To do that, I just grabbed that message expression and dragged it up here and it created that node, right? And then you connect the dots here and, and it'll put those together. Um, there's an action down here to update a uh, format a UI label, right? This guy. And uh, so we can drop that in there and, uh, and then connect that again, just the same way I missed <laughs> down on this guy. And, uh, and the label name here, we'll choose the name that's inside, uh, inside there, of course, right? Um, so we'll grab that, I'll put those out of the way. So this rule now will go and update that message uh, inside if we wanna change that dynamically, right? Now, I, I put that in two places. Um, one, I noticed that I wanted it to update immediately when the dialog opened. And so on the main dialog here, I said when the dialog opens, run a visual rule and, and choose that particular one. Here again, this usually looks like this. And say with dialog open, I say I wanna run a visual rule, I'll choose that. And then in the, the action to execute here, again, I can right click there and, and choose an available visual rule. And that's the only one that's available. So it shows me that there. So that gets, uh, that gets that there. And then the other place I want it is if I change the diameter, right? So in the diameter here, when the value changes, I wanna run a visual rule. And here again, I'll choose that same one. So this now will update the, the title of that, that message or title of that label uh, when we either change the value of the, well, first when we come into the dialog, it'll up update that. May or may not be visible, but we'll update, the, we'll update the text of the label. And then when we change the value of the diameter. And in both cases there, it'll, it'll again update the message. And then if we're showing it, we'll see, the, we'll see the current value there, okay? So let's finish that and take a look. Uh, as we come out here and again, run this guy. Uh, we're at 165, when we go to 160, that of course is gonna go away. Uh, if we go back to say 158 or some other number like that, uh, let's see, it's not quite doing it. Uh, and I gotta figure out why. Um, do, 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 do. I think, I think I know. Let's check here really quick. Let's go back into PTS. This is a little tricky hooking this up now that I think about it. So this label here, let's do this title here as test. And then I think in my visual rule, I needed to get that to hook up once uh, in there. And yeah, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna get that hooked up correctly. I had unhooked it to, to show the first part of the video, but there there you saw we're, we're choosing kind of which one we're updating. Um, so we got that guy and we'll say close and let's give that a whirl now. 
Okay, there and there, and there we go. So now when we came into the dialog, you see it, it imme actually immediately updated the, 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 the string there. Uh, if we do 160, it goes away, right? If we do some other um, 143, or something like that, you see it's updating the value in the string and updating the, uh, uh, making the, the, the string visible, uh, label visible, and the uh, label bitmap visible, okay? Good. So that's that's an example, right? Of again taking a, a an input value there. Uh, as we change that input value, uh, of course we're we're causing an NX model update. As we do that, our little message expression is updating, and uh, and then as we uh, if that evaluate that, if it's not a multiple of ten, then we can we can use the visibility control inside a product template author to show or hide that particular UI widget. And, uh, and then populate, yeah, dynamically populate the label if we really want to, right? If you don't need to, you don't need to do that part. That's, that's, uh, that's for the, the interested student. <laughs> but anyway, I, uh, I hope that you find all of that useful.